this time, I am your co-host, Laura Eisenhower. And I'm your other co-host, Marisa Accicello. Welcome. And we have a really awesome guest today. One of our favorites in the whole universe. Absolutely. Dr. Dear- Dr. Charnel Wolverton Sihan, our dear, dear friend. So happy you're here with us today. So She's happy a doctor, a naturopathic doctor, an author, a speaker. Uh, she's created this incredible tarot deck, crystal deck. Uh, man, and she's got the True TV and and the show with uh, Craig Walker, who couldn't be with us today. But uh, man, you you just do so much amazing work out there and such a profound healer and person. And we're going to talk about Easter coming up and we're, we're, we're going to probably delve into a lot of topics, but yeah, Marissa, what, what was sort of our, our focus and, and concept and theme for the day? So our main focus is pagan Easter and the roots of pagan Easter and how it all started and how it was based on fertility, like the fertility goddess, like Inanna from Inanna to Ishtar to Eostar, the German Eostar, and where the Easter egg came from. It was a symbol of fertility and the rabbit and where the Easter parade came from. And then we're going to talk about a lot of other current events, but basically we're going to dive right into Easter, pagan Easter. Yeah. And what's what I found interesting is there's like overlays and we see this with like Anunnaki mm-hmm. and been, uh, some of the red clone technologies uh, in Egypt that have distorted some of these pagan holidays even with the very names that you just mentioned mm-hmm. um, some have attributed this holiday to dark rituals mm-hmm. um, and that the painting of the eggs was the blood of the um, young virgin sacrificed <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and uh or or uh the three month old babies uh that were put on the altar right so mm-hmm. um so some have like a trigger when it comes to bringing up the pagan part of it but the true true nature of I, where we're coming from is all about uh the rebirth the the spring the renewal the resurrection the rising out of the depths and mm-hmm. and the true essence of like mother earth and I think there are these overlays that really are the imposter deities that mm-hmm. have. So so I I, I kind of wanted to just bring that part up. Yeah. So and I think it's really interesting, like, OK, we first like the pagan rituals first started with Inanna, who morphed into Ishtar, same goddess. And then there is Astarte and then there is Eostar, who was German So there's all these, it's the same goddess, but different variations of that goddess. So, and they all have fertility rituals because they're fertility goddesses. So the fertility rituals basically were, happened in the spring and also happened, the rituals happened in the winter. So they would have the heroes gamos, right? In the spring. And the, the woman would mate, would be, would, mate with the female goddess which would be step in for like anana or ishtar or eostar would mate with the chosen king so it would be like the heroes gamos thing and then she would be impregnated and give birth on christmas so right. that's what the that's what the gist of that whole dynamic is by the way just as an aside i read about this on Christmas about the Christmas babies being born, right? On Christmas, my birthday's on Christmas, which was kind of weird. Oh. And then I also read that those babies were sacrificed. So it kind of freaked me out when I read oh. that. That's the satanic inversion, you know, the Baphomet yeah. and the inversion of the Sophianic energy, the dark mother reversals that are very different mm-hmm. from the cycles of nature going from uh, just uh, you know, the Samain and uh, the, you know, the death and then lifting of the veils and then the Astara, you know, is rebirth and and associated with the spring equinox and the return to that sacred union that is very much a process I feel like we go through every year. So Dr. Sean, I'll talk to us about that, like feeling into the cycles as we move through these different events and yes. how we feel that in our bodies. Like, what, yes. what are your thoughts on 
Yeah, uh, one thing I want to say, because you keep bringing up rebirth, and I love that, um, uh, we are in a big time resurrection energy, and I don't mean that like Jesus Christ resurrection, although, you know, that's a thing too, uh, in some some form or fashion, but um, there has been death on the planet in immense amounts in the mm -hmm. last few, few months, really years, three years, but uh, really, really sped up. Uh, in the last three months and not just with my personal family but with families everywhere patients that I'm working with people are losing people losing people um, and with that loss wh whether that's an you know illusion yes the physical is still is not there anymore but there's an energetic resurrection energy that has been given to the planet in general mm -hmm whether equinox happens or not that it's already in motion and it's doing a lot of really cool things for those who are aware of it and working with it and coming you know rising above um with those energies and so um you know i think it's perspective and it's what we focus on and you know i'm not saying that there isn't a healing time required you know when there is loss or what have you but um but we're in a, a really a window here of extreme energies um, that can be used for good and to create miracles and to manifest really cool things and or not. Um, and as far as the culture and the timeline, um, so interesting because I was going through a, a personal uh, thing within some stuff that I talked to you guys about privately and um, I choose to keep it in the silent, but with that um, whole situation, I had confided in a friend here um, this weekend about some of the things that were going on. And she came back to me and she was like, hey, you know what? She, her and her people are going through something similar. And she's like, everyone's just living in their perspective and their reality of like what they've created. And it may not be the same as what ours is. And that we just get the opportunity to focus on like us and our inner and what's mm -hmm. going on with us individually and to live in our reality and to not take it personal that people aren't necessarily on the same timeline as we are. And mm -hmm. I, uh, I took that and I was like, okay. And then when I get home, the, the girl who helps me with tech stuff and she, she creates some little shorts for me. Um, she had sent me something, uh, of an interview that I did, uh, reading my book talking about um de recoding the timeline um for chapter 13 in my book and i had kind of forgotten that i even wrote it um uh, or talked about it in in my um in my book and here's this guy reading parts of my my book and i'll have to read you this one thing and then i'll i'll stop but uh hold on da -da 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 -da. let's see um shoot I'll have to find it, but it talks about basically how there's a scripture and I don't look at scripture like actual holy scripture as much as I do quantum physics, if that makes sense. Um, but it said, um, oh man, I got to find it now, but it, it talks about recoding and the importance of recoding and how we have this ability. Oh, uh, no, I'm going to find it. If you guys want to talk while I'm looking for it. Uh, oh, wait, here it is. Here it is. Okay. Um, do not be conformed by this world, but be, um, but to, to take hope in, in creating your own reality or be renewed in your own mind, um, is like the scripture part. But when I broke it down and looked at it, um, do not be con C O N dash formed. Do not be shaped by the con con is trickery or deceit or deception or, um, so do not be conned or shaped by the trick of this oh world. And when I looked up the world, the word world, it means timeline. I, I, so basically world means timeline. Yes. If you look at the real, they misuse the, it's not even world. It says, do not be conformed or tricked by the timeline of the culture or the ages. Instead wow. be transformed. Trans is meta or to be meta shaped 
by the renewing of our mind, our perception and our understanding of things. So we create our own timeline based mm -hmm. on our truth and not the truth of the ages, what they want uh, to shape us into. And I, I just thought it was so cool that we can be transformed by the staying power of big source code when we choose, if we choose. And that's the opportunity um, for our own, uh, you know, so here it was almost like a time travel for me because I went through that thing. I talked to the lady, the lady tells me that I get back and then someone regurgitates it, my own book from however many years ago to come back to me to minister to myself right now. You know, so I encourage you guys to watching to, to recode your own timeline and not be congested or no interference, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's so really I love that Charnel because it really empowers us and in, instead of like our reality controlling what we think and what we do I mean we're hit by so many different things like what's going on with this boat and what's going on with like you know Boeing and you know this politician and that thing and blah 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 that divide and conquer strategy it's like taking the power back and and really connecting with source, which, you know, I mean, I know we were talking about pagan Easter, but I'm wearing red lipstick in honor of Mary Magdalene today. <laughs> because, okay, because the night before legend has it, the night before the Last Supper, she and Jesus had a moment and she, her, she strengthened him through their sacred sex right and gave and conceived their daughter Aww. and i just think you know it's this is it's time for us to embrace our power like our mother our inherent mother energy and you know i i've been going to church a lot and in hearing about jesus which i love and and then you know, there's like Mary Magdalene is like shunted off to the side, but she had her 12 apostles and she was the apostle who knew, knew all. And, you know, she strengthened Jesus the night before the last supper. So yeah, I think we're so much more powerful than we've ever been getting given credit for. And we, but we know this. So I guess what I'm saying fits into what you're saying, Charnel. I love it. Yeah. And this is really what this time of year I feel is all about just emerging <laughs> from sort of that darkness where the seeds are planted in the womb and that they, mm -hmm. you know, come to fruition as spring, you know, comes, it's all about the fertility of our creative intent and what we give birth to the spring equinox and all that is the rebirth, regeneration and resurrection. And even the male, the, uh, had many names connected with this mm -hmm. like russ and addis and so uh you know it's just very interesting you know what is going on in the internal world that we need to stay you know connected with um jesus magdalene all these sacred union you know sort of archetypes is the divine template within ourselves that, you know, go through this process. So this maiden mother crone as well is very much, you know, also uh, how, how we move through, you know, cycles of release, letting go and regeneration and how things, you know, really, you know, return to us. And it's not just in the physical, it's like we have to really release the mental, emotional and spiritual energies that, we accumulate that comes from outside of us that is trying to write a different script than the one that we're capable of manifesting in accordance with cosmic and natural law and the cycles of mother earth, which are in this really powerful window period right now. So I feel every cycle is so much more powerful with the anchoring of the mother energy with the 13th sign. And, um, and I really tried to bring a lot of that into my book. Uh, you know, just the, you know, the, the, the importance of this in this, divine template and this is what we all have in common is is that power of creativity and how much the siphoning and harvesting of our energies is when we get yanked into these storylines that are engineered and how that batteries up these timelines that are artificial compared to 
our sovereignty and our ability to manifest something much greater. So talk to us, both of you, like I might as well ask both of you, you know, confronting that warfare or an attack energy. And I know just what you shared, Charnel, is just such a great example of what we're talking about, but um, just to be so, you know, aware of what gets into that fertile creative womb that we need to remove from ourselves so we don't give birth to the thoughts and ideas that are the propaganda and the narratives that might steer us in the wrong direction and what techniques and what your thoughts are on that to clear that which you do so brilliantly in the work you do <laughs> well imagination is big and we can imagination one way or another uh we can image we can imagine ourselves right out of a partnership or a friendship or you know how many of you guys have ever like worried and worried and worried that someone was mad and then they become mad, you know, um, and, or we can create our own timeline through envisioning the best case scenario. I think there's so many programs to envision the worst case scenario. And there's so many, you know, past traumas that try to, that get triggered and maybe loop us into, um, you know, accidentally creating kind of on default, you know, some things that maybe not our highest because that's what's still in the cells and projecting out and enticing or having a match to the darker forces that, you know, and so the more we can clear the higher frequency radiation that goes out and then we get a match to that instead of the lower stuff. Um, but those things quote on the outside, which is a very dualistic way to say it, I'm not, i choose the union um but when those forces try to bait us into either conversations or ideas or thought processes um you know if there's even one percent of us that believes it or you know is curious or is there something there that it can connect to uh, through a cord or what have you um then then we're we're basically opening the door to that and in a, in a consent in some ways so um some of it's subconscious some of it's very conscious and the more we can clear and be aware of what we're aware of and thinking you know be thoughtful of what we're thinking and you know make better choices energetically physically mentally spiritually then those doors are closed and sealed and we're radiating light and um you know i just did a whole training this weekend for pranic healing and we would um work with people and we would test their aura and then we would have them do a meditation and their aura would, would totally expand, you know, mm -hmm. just within three or four minutes of doing a meditation. Wow. So, and all the meditation we were doing is envisioning us having love in our hands and seeing the world before us and us surrounding the world with love and light and just maintaining love and light to all that's on the planet. And as we did that, the people that were all in the room, all of their biofields completely enlarged just in, within minutes. So, you know, and the opposite is also true. When we think terrible things are getting engaged in these like, you know, negative kind of rabbit holes, you know, energetically, um, then we shrink in our biofield. And then when you have lower levels, then you attract the lower level stuff, you know, so we are so powerful, you know, uh, and we have so much technology at our, literally in our fingertips, in our cells, in our bodies. And when we tap into that power, instead of focusing on all the things we don't have, really focusing on things that we do have and engaging in that and loving ourselves and doing the inner work, that is how we create our new earth individually and collectively. And, um, and I love this kind of work, you know, this is like, I just love working with people. I love working on myself. And as we work on ourselves individually, we're adding to the collective over and over and over again. Everyone, you know, the program is, I won't say everyone, but the program is fix them. And it's not fix them. It's fix me. And when mm -hmm. we fix me, we're actually fixing them without having to do it. And I love, I love that people love change and people aren't opposed to change, but they are opposed to being changed. So mm -hmm. when we stop trying to change everybody else and give them our version and try to make them believe what we believe or see what we see or hear what we hear, 
but only focus on ourselves on the inner energy is energy. So we're doing it on the inside and it's creating a whole new encounter. Those people will fall away. They will do their own thing. They'll, they won't be able to engage anymore because we're so high up in the frequency that it's, um, it's a, it's a block in scripture. It's the Psalms, um, nine 11, you know, um, but nine 11. Yes. It, it, yeah. What's the Psalm nine 11. That's it, so interesting. I'm pretty sure it's nine 11. I'm going to look, but, uh, but anyway, you guys talk while I look it up. All right. I never I'm sorry. Heard I'm sorry. Psalm. 91 Psalms 91. Oh, okay. Whoever right. dwells okay. in the shelter of the most high will mm -hmm. rest in the shadow of the almighty who is source code. So when you jump, I love to look this up, but um, I'm sure that it's, there's some deep, I'm going to look it up now. You guys talk. You know what I wonder about? Cause like, I don't know about you guys, but I, I have like, I could get really mad sometimes and like, I have a little bit of a temper and like, I can hold on to things and, you know, like forgiveness is sometimes really hard. And I like wonder, okay, oh my God, am I going to ascend or not? Because I have like, sometimes I hold on to stuff and I can't like people really make me mad. Like it's hard for me to forgive. And then like, I do that like exercise where you like see the person in the ether and like you forgive them, they forgive you. Imagine that. I don't even know if that's enough. Like how important is forgiveness and how do we go about forgiving and, you know, also forgiving ourselves? I mean, that to me is like, to me, that's like the number one thing that's like, hanging me up because i'm kind of yeah. that people I, right i definitely think like feeling that accumulation of energy in our bodies like if we resist the letting go that's mm -hmm. it letting mm -hmm. go yeah. so talk to us about that charnel I yeah mean, just not being having to be right just letting go just letting people be in their reality and being okay with it i mean i told you guys what happened to me last night and i'm telling you yeah. That was just a choice. It was a simple choice. And it's something that I've lived with for over a year and almost a half. And instantly my physical body was healed just by making a new thought, some new choices. And I was like, what? That just happened? So just letting go and forgiving and not like, you know, just you go your way, I'll go mine and like do it with love and love people. You could still, even though you don't like somebody, you could still send them love and keep them at a distance, right? Yeah. Is that you the way to, to do be friends? You don't have, you to, don't be have to be friends. friends. They're so important. You know what's interesting about Virgo? It's ruled by Mercury and it's an earth sign, but it's the plant, it's the sign that has to do with our physiology, our physical health, our physical lifestyle. Uh -huh. But it's it 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 responds to the mind. So the health of the body responds to the mind. And just like you said, Charnel, and what you were telling us, when you were able to shift that energy, your body shifted, right? And so that's why I feel with the bombardment of mind control and psyops and indoctrination, this is why we're in such a sick society because they're not connected with truth and source energy. They're connected with all these distortions that the body cannot, you know, handle. And same thing with the things that we hold on to. The body is might put us in a crisis, and it's an important one. But when we get in touch with it and we realize the shift that we need to make in order to set our bodies free and set the energy free. Um, you know, we can trust that it'll come back around. And with the kind of intent that you hold and the love, you know, that we hold and the intent of all humans that are listening to this, uh, I mean, I feel that it's like we we let people go and and they either get it or they don't. They can throw projections and distortions and misunderstandings. But if we stay solid and we protect ourselves in those boundaries and not let it leak in to drag us down into a belief in it or guilt or you know, we just keep holding the love and the unconditional love. I feel uh, that is the 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 mother energy and source energy of the mother, true father, mm -hmm. that distortions in religion have, have really like made it difficult to connect with, with all this guilt or you're a sinner or, you know, you made a mistake or um, ways that narcissists or manipulators can trick a very empathic and beautiful soul into like feeling crazy. I mean- and I know that's a big one, people surviving like narcissists or controllers, how they make you the bad guy, no matter how much you give and love. Oh, oh well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like forgiving yourself from getting, ra I got to forgive myself for letting myself getting coiled in those kind of relationships that have mm -hmm. 
taken my energy in that way to we get just, it back, right? That's what you're talking about, Marissa, right? Yeah. I mean, like, Charnel, you use the word your shoulder was locked. And when you and you found a way to unlock your shoulder, right? So the key is what? Letting go, love and forgiveness. What is the I mean, it's interesting that lock, unlock, what's the key? And what's, you know, opening the door to like free, like setting yourself free. Like, it's kind of interesting, that whole kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Language. And for those of you guys who are watching that you didn't hear the backstory is I had two frozen shoulders in the past for over a year and a half because of an incident that in my mind happened and or was still happening in my perspective. And mm -hmm. um, I was given some choices to make some firmer boundaries some opportunities to make some firmer boundaries and to literally cut some things off and close some things down. And, um, up until that point, I was very sad. I was in sorrow about the situation. I mean, it was like, Laura, you know, how many times I've called and cried with you about the situation. And it was very, very sad. But when, um, some things came back and I, and I had this opportunity to to shift um I wasn't really liking that I had to make the the new choices it was not fun it wasn't a good feeling to um you know someone had reached out to me and basically threatened me and you know blah 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 blah. but it took them coming to me and threatening me and making a, accusations someone I hadn't heard from in a year and a half um to kind of spark a different, like something came up in me. I was like, this is just wrong, sorry. And uh, I felt this, I don't, I choose to know, but I was just like, you know, the sorrow turned into that anger. You were talking about anger. Anger is not a bad thing. Anger can be a great catalyst for change. Just like, I agree. like Laura was saying, sometimes a healing crisis can be a good catalyst for change, you know? So I'm thankful for the communication that came to me, even though it was not fun to see that that was their perspective, it mm -hmm. became a catalyst for me to say, you know what? I have been too fucking nice for too long and I've been too sad for too long. And I just said, okay, you want this? This is what I'll do. And blah, 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 blah. Did all the things that they requested, cut off everything. And um, I sat down on the couch last night around eight or whatever. And I just was like, huh, for the first time, I don't feel sad about this anymore. It was like, I don't, you can call forgiveness, you know, forgiveness, the word forgiveness is to forgive, meaning to give in advance. And we, we forgive and give and give and give and give. That doesn't I mean you have to be friends or hang out with these people or anything. It just, it's for us to forgive mm -hmm. for that energy to be cleared because the limbic system can't tell between me and you anyway. So when we forgive other people, we're actually forgiving ourselves. And energetically, it gives your body this relaxed, um, different nervous system, because your body takes it as our own forgiveness to ourselves, even though I choose to know what I would be forgiving. But anyway, um, I forgave and I went to bed and um, I, I usually wear my glasses when I'm not wearing them, I'll stick them on my head. And I have been having to lift, to use two arms to lift this hand to even take my glasses off. And uh, I was only able to lift my arms to this, this level for over a year and a half. And I realized, oh my gosh, I just lifted my glasses. I know it's a little thing, but this I could not do yesterday. And nor could I hang up clothes no. in my mm -hmm. closet or open a car door or roll down a window to reach for stuff or lift heavy things. And like, look, I can do like a total like windmill with my arm is completely like I can reach behind my back. I could pull up my pants. Like both arms were doing this. Now this one is still, this is, has about 20 more, 20% 20 mobility and I'm pushing to make it go up on its own. But uh, I have more mobility here and I'm waiting to get the key to unlock whatever this is about. But mm -hmm. This happened at 9 p.m. last night after I made those choices and after I spent the day cutting things away, literally, uh, physically and mentally and spiritually and whatever, and just going, okay, you do you. Bye. And I'm, <laughs> you know, and I was like, I literally said out loud when I did this, I was like, oh my God, am I in a dream? 
And I mm-hmm. stood up and I was like, freaking out. I'm like, this is not real. This is not real. <laughs> but what is real? You know, nothing's real anyway. So all of these things that we, that we got to forgive anyway, is like, so what? It's not real anyway. This whole thing isn't real. Every, you know, it's like everything matters and nothing matters all at once. That's true. Wow. I see. I love that. And I'm like, I'm also thinking like you said something about being too nice, right? You, you could be, you've been, you've been too nice. And then, okay, we're in Lent. We're like, tomorrow's Good Friday. We're talking about Easter, Easter Sunday. And I was just thinking about like Jesus and how everybody thought he was like love and light and unicorns and all that, right? He was a total badass. I mean, Jesus was kind of like, he had like good, like, I want to, I don't want to say fuck you, but kind of, he did have that kind of energy, you know, the way he treated the Pharisees and overturning the table in the temple. And, you know, he was just like, the lesson of Jesus is not to be too nice, but to like stand up and stand up for what's right and stand up for love. And, you know, you can overcome your cross no matter what it is. I mean... So I don't know. I think it's like, you know what? Jesus was a badass. And like, that's totally inspirational to me. Jesus is I think a that's badass. The, right? That's a good shirt. I, I mean, I think that's the nature of regeneration and resurrection. Um, yeah. And, you know, we're elemental. We've got fire, air, earth, water, mm-hmm. and ether. And, and when the elements show up in us, if if it's used and and and, and directed in the right way i these are forces that that we need to like appreciate about ourselves we don't want just anger that consumes us and eats us alive we want to turn it into passion and and and, and direction and action and be that warrior you know with the water element we, if 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 we're filling up with emotions you know the sky knows to cry and water the seeds in order to create life and this is what i feel this time of renewal and regeneration is all about and maybe before we close we could talk about the symbolism of the eggs but you know this is what i love about talking to you guys because we're not you know and we encourage others to not be afraid of these things that erupt in us but to be more conscious about where we direct it yeah so that it's not just uh like just madness and just sitting back and watching the craziness of the world but you know, what, if, if you're upset, if you're depressed, if you're struggling with it, something in your inner voice is trying to connect you to your mission, to be mm-hmm. an agent of change, to be a participant in this co-creation of the organic ascension, you know, and that's all actually trying to, you know, nudge you in that direction instead of just sit back and just take this abuse of, of, you know, this engineered reality that is so inverted. Yeah. I love I love that. And I think anger is actually a gift. And it's yes. like, it depends on how you use it, right? Yep. You can transmute the energy, like alchemize the energy. That's what, yeah, right? Yes. And if we don't actually feel the anger and we just think, oh, that's bad. I shouldn't do that. And you suppress it. You mm-hmm. just delay the healing process. You know, feelings are a gift in general, whether it's sad or mad or all the things you just said is it is a gift and we are a gift and our emotions aren't separate from us. And, mm-hmm. you know, um, and it is Psalms 91 one. I just looked it up because that's where I got the 911 thing. But that talks about uh, it says he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty, which is the field. And it talks about trusting God, which God is where? In here. The kingdom of God is in here. When we trust our intuition and we trust those little nudges that may be different for you and me and everyone else, hopefully we all have our customized uh, path of, you know, what we need to do and what we don't need to do. And I say need, but we get the option. Um, Mm -hmm. But when we, if I had stuffed the anger, I wouldn't have had this. But Mm -hmm. so, and I'm not staying in the anger, but I felt it. And when we feel it, we heal it. You know, people say that. And if you are at A and you're trying to get to C, when you depress things or suppress them uh, on this, let's say this is an energetic timeline, you can be in sub A down here. So you're not going to get the goal, you know, and suppressing it through alcohol, drugs, whatever, you know, denial, you know, all the things you then you're not in a straight line. It, it, 
it doesn't, you don't get the path of this timeline. You're in this timeline, which is a lower level timeline. So when we can stay up and feel it and go, hey, I acknowledge you're there and I embrace it and come sit with me. Let's hang out for a minute and like clear this. Just the acknowledgement and the feeling of it is what makes the anger go away. So now you could be in a place on the other side, which is joy, and you get to your goal and you create what you choose instead of something lower. It's interesting that suppression equals depression. Yeah. Suppression, depression. Mm -hmm. uh, what am I missing? Oppression. <laughs> You know, exactly. But you can reverse it with expression. Yes. The opposite <laughs> is expression and you know, living our truth, being authentic in that expression. Mm -hmm. And then you make an impression. Oh! <laughs> we should do a rap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. I yeah. I mean, I'm feeling just better energy just because now it's like the light is overriding the dark and I mean, we are pulled into just going through the seasons alone, you know, this kind of dark night of the soul. Then we got the eclipses and all the, you know, different world events. What are you perceiving um, in the world right now with the events taking place? How are you guys kind of like processing um, a lot of the predictive programming and how it's kind of showing up at these very critical and, you know, times of growth periods that we could be maintaining if if we weren't constantly thrown into a trigger response to the madness i mean i can't even believe the headlines you know oh, that's not the real kate it's a clone it's a it's the ai you know and she's been sacrificed it's just the the nuttiness and insanity of of all that we're dealing with on the world stage i guess is my question and people what are your thoughts i mean i'm it's hilarious um i mean i've seen people who cook remote he remote viewed her and she was on mars and not that people can't be on mars but i'm just saying they've taken it so crazy it's just um and the whole q thing and they're like oh you know q says it's like you guys stop you know and yes they're i'm not saying everything that's being seen is what's real but i also q is compromised what three four years ago now or four, five years ago now i uh, choose to know it uh, people could go overboard and it's just like, you know what, whatever it is, what it, it's your perspective, whatever you envision is what will be yours. And so, I, yeah. Also, you know what? I'm kind of tired of people like describing the walls of the prison, you know, yeah. I'm like talking about where we are, what's going on, blah, 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 blah. It's like, I don't want to hear the problem anymore. I want to hear the solution. Go higher. I the source, exactly. Yeah. I want to like rise above this bullshit and yeah. like, you know, be like, be more Christ-like and connect to consciousness. I mean, yeah. to me, that's really where it's at. Connect with like mind and not saying I'm not going to go through the dark night of the soul and like have anger and work through that anger, which is what we're talking about. But like, it's like busted with the bullshit already. That's how I feel. Yeah. Like, where is your focus? Focus yeah. on something higher, you know, get a new thought. That's what mm -hmm. the word repent actually means. Like this is the penthouse, the top floor, right? Mm -hmm. And to repent means to think again, Renew the mind, going back to that, you know, do not be conformed or shaped by the trickery, but be <laughs> renewed, like get a new thought, Ch repent, change the, change the thought process so we can create again. And regeneration follows death. It's like death is cyclical, death, rebirth, alchemy, transformation. That is, is the cyclical part of it all. And, um, Yeah. It's resurrection energy is here right at your right you are living resurrection energy we have it inside of us so look, why not use it yeah and especially now like this is the right this is the time to do it and like i'm not even gonna focus on like what's going on like with all the different you know eclipses and all that stuff i do not care i mean i'm just gonna focus on what's going on energetically and what i could put out in the world well don't they call it the christ moon did i make that up they did they do that's interesting i think it's the christ moon that we're in right now right laura or i, I choose to know i i i'm not I, I didn't see that term connected with it but it's a really powerful thing as far as just so much 
uh, I, mean, I, I, I think we should do another show and, and really dive into it, maybe closer to the eighth or around that time. I think that's um, a great idea. Yeah, that's such a good these, idea. These, there's always a psyops or some sort of engineered event that mm -hmm. wants to distract us so that that vital energy gets sucked into these outer events. And we don't want to turn a blind eye, but we need to be more the neutral observer. And I wanted to say another thing about words. When you look at like purgatory, I look at it as purgatory. It's in between the worlds of like the underworld and the heavens. The purgatory is the time of year we kind of move through the shadow stuff. We need to purge it out because mm -hmm. we're stuck if we're stagnant. If we're holding it in our body and we mm -hmm. feel the negative thought forms come up and it feels like, you know, you're just kind of locked between worlds, but it's that purification of releasing and purging that I feel lightens us into like the spring and renewal of all the seeds that we've planted to come to fruition. Um, and it's very hard to take the time sometimes to cancel out all the noise, just to mm -hmm. focus and really trust the self that we can do this, but that's absolutely what they're trying to rob us of and distract us from. And Let's so we just have to... um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I love what we're saying. Oh. I really think we should do a show just about transforming the energy of April 8th. Let's do it. I'm there. Let's do it. All right. But to be continued. Yes. Awesome. Love sure. it. I think that, you know, symbolism of the egg, you know, is so significant too. And there's so much we could say about that. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, just the symbolism of, you know, this time of year. And there's so many different things. I did mention the how it got inverted with the painting of eggs with sacrifice, uh, sacrificial like blood, but, um, but, but the egg being, you know, what bursts out as like hatching and, you know, rebirth. And so right. there's a lot of dark overlays on the pagan thing, which has demonized a lot of it, but, you know, we have to kind of like remove that and get back to the cycles of nature and what it really has meant with these archetypes before they were, because there's a lot of imposters, right? When we look at the word Isis or even there's there's mm -hmm. inversions of Archangel Michael and how the planetary grid network has been impacted that mm -hmm. we don't want to get lost in these overlays and just, you know, see that, oh, the religions that came in and like tore all that down were, you know, to stop all this sacrificial stuff. Mm -hmm. And then look at what's in the underbelly of the Vatican. Is that really? No, it's like a next level facade covering up the very thing that, they're claiming to have tried to wipe out. Do you guys know what I mean? Are you talking about the rituals below the Vatican or the 53 miles of books below the Vatican? Like uh, all of it? The list yeah. is long. <laughs> the list is long, yeah. I also want to say one thing, though. The cosmic egg, right? That's the mother. That's, that's the, you know, God the mother is the cosmic egg. Also the red egg, you know, when you're painting the egg red, red that's also a symbol of mary magdalene so it's like all this stuff gets inverted yeah there's overlays and to demonize yeah. that people don't want to return to that i mean i even talked to a neighbor about just honoring mother she goes oh no you don't do that god created you know this place and honoring mother earth i don't worship any idols it's like mother earth is not an idol it's a freaking planet we live on and we're breathing air we're walking on we're, we're being nourished by the herbs and vegetables and plants and the animal spirits. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to walk my dog up to the house. I'll see you later. I can, just can't have this conversation. <laughs> it's not yeah, about yeah. worship, but I mean, think about church and worship. It's like, it's just realizing our deep connection with it so that we can go through the renewal. We can go through the healing. We can go through the release. We can go through the rebirth every year and, and feel these cycles um, that know how to restore, know how to heal, know how to regenerate, that break this programming of aging and, you know, disease and whatever script we're being thrown that is what people like think is the human condition. I mean, it's amazing how much of our creativity is being harvested. And you talk about this a lot, Dr. Charnel, about the imagination and, mm -hmm. and how that gets infected. And clearing all of that is the work you do. And the miracle energy which your book you know describes of you know talk to us about that like the energy of miracles and in the face of adversity how to call upon that well it's a conscious voice again and um you know as we clear whatever the subconscious is you know we can have all these programs running that we don't even know are running and and or we can have dna um code 
from our ancestors that has karma, you know, that brings in things that we may not. So for example, you could be the nicest person ever and like, just go on and like, oh, I'm so nice and I'm so loyal. Why am I getting all these cheaters? And why do I get people who steal from me and la 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 la, cancel clear. And, um, and have these patterns like that. And it could be that there's some area of the person's life that isn't completely true and authentic. And meaning um, maybe you're with a partner you're not supposed to be with, or you're maybe you're doing business with uh, somebody that you've been like really feeling un, you know, unsettled about, but you just haven't done anything about it to break that off or to live true in that, that sense. So living true isn't just saying the right words that sound good and sound true, but it's living and embodying truth and, and, and all of your decision-making because, you know, and, and doing this every day, moment to moment. So like get up in the morning and should you, you know, let's say you got to go to a store. Well, which store should, do I feel intuitively to go to for this thing I got to get? Like maybe it's this one, maybe it's one you no, normally don't go to, you know, and just paying attention to your daily moment to moment path follow that embodying authenticity and truth. And that's what gives the, the energetic response back to your field is when you are living true that, you know, but let's say you don't go to the right store and you're like, man, I, you know, something happens and you're like, dude, I knew I should have went to that other store because if I want to been on this road, blah, 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 then this wouldn't have happened. And, you know, or maybe you got a flat tire or, you know, it's like just paying attention and not feeling like, you know, not being mad at yourself if you did the wrong thing, but to take it as a lesson to go, gosh, I should have paid attention to my intuition and really, you know, seek ye first the kingdom and then all these things will be added unto you. So when we follow that, in, that individualized, customized timeline and, and follow the true heart of what we know to be our path moment to moment to moment, that's when we create something really beautiful instead of all the mishaps and maybe attracting what isn't your highest. Beautifully said. Awesome. Yep. I love that. And you know, and, and you know, it, it just, it's just so amazing when we think that when people are like, like, how do I do this or how do I do that? It's just, just really, you know, aligning and just allowing and receiving and just releasing and just, letting just the flow move, you know, through us without the resistance, you know, the mind control, the dark Saturn and these voices in our heads that we mistake for intuition when it says, no, you can't, or you're not good enough, or you don't deserve that. You know, it's just so much, uh, not, you know, the truth. That's not our inner voice. These, these things have been so cast upon people to the point where they think that, it's it's hard to determine what's your intuition versus what is a controller authority that, you know, push that upon you when you were growing up or when you were vulnerable and created these blocks and resistances. That's a pretty tough one. So what are your thoughts on that? And I don't know if that's, I mean, maybe Marissa, you have a better question because we could just talk forever, but I was just <laughs> about that too because oh, that's a good question gate, though i want to hear yeah, those wanna, are like the gatekeepers yeah. right so talk yeah. to us about that and what you see in your work as far as helping people determine intuition versus that wasn't you that was something that got conditioned into you that you're mistaking for your inner voice yeah how do you discern fear yeah i mean versus so intuition. we have you know voice to god tech that tries to come in and interfere mm -hmm. with our own voice we have our own like childhood experiences that can cause us to make decisions one way or another based on like that fear or, you know, trauma mm -hmm. we have, um, you know, I think it takes practice. I think it takes really getting into a, the quietness, um, like Laura was talking about. And I think you mentioned it too, Marissa, of just being still, you know, mm -hmm. um, again, there's scriptures be still and know that I am God who, mm -hmm. where is God right here? You know, mm -hmm. and when we are, matter of fact, that scripture that says, do not be conformed um, mm -hmm. into this, uh, don't be uh, tricked or shaped into this cultured age or timeline, but be renewed. If you keep going, it actually says, and then you will know how to discern the will of God. Wow. Okay. 
So it's, go. it's practicing, it's being in the, in God and this, that awareness, like you said, just be, getting quiet and mm -hmm. really for me, it's practice. And I did it wrong a long time. It's like, you I got to where I was attuned to feeling like, okay, that feels wrong mm -hmm. to do this. Or, you know, even if it was like, do I buy this car or do I buy this car? You know, it's like you, you can energetically pendulum or muscle test because your body knows your subconscious mm -hmm. knows, but also if you've had enough wrong choices where you feel it in your body, you can eventually go like, okay, I know what good feels like. I know what bad feels like. I know what the outcome is for good. I know what the outcome is for bad. And you start to just like pay attention, but it's all going back to the being aware of what you're aware of, being aware mm -hmm. of what you're thinking, when being aware of what you're feeling and, and fine tuning that, but also, um, revelation comes from rest. So if you're so busy and, you know, and you don't take time to meditate or be in your quiet time, then you probably won't even hear or feel anyway, because we're feeling so much and we're bombarded by so much. And there's so many voices. And I don't just mean like literal, but there's just static, I should say. Mm -hmm. So we can get into source, like you were saying, and mm -hmm. hear source code. Mm -hmm. Or we can stay and participate in the energies of the timeline of the ages, mm -hmm. which they choose like the static. They choose right. they want right and circus thing. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so that's just kind of where the way I see it. But again, we could go on and on and on and we'll save some of it for the next one. Um, but yeah, I mean, what are you guys doing, Marissa? What do you how do you handle it? Um, you know what? I, I, I do have like, I'll, I know that I'll agree to something or I'll just like, I'll say no. And then people mistake my nice, like niceness, like my kindness for like weakness sometimes, mm. I think. So I'll say no. And then like somebody will try and override that. And maybe I'll like agree. And then I'll like wake up the next day and I'm like, no, why did I do that? And I'll have to go back and you know, really put my foot down, which is very annoying, but now I'm getting better at like saying no, you know? And um, so I'm just trying to be conscious of giving myself the space I need and creating, I have a boundary issue. So I have to like create boundaries and, you know, make sure when I say no, that means no. And like that is heard. So that's a big thing for me. I don't know if you can relate to that at all, but I, in the past yes and i choose to be better at it cystis oil is really good to help say no and make what is? cystus c-i-s-t-u-s yeah, i'm gonna doubt oil. myself in that yeah yeah i'm gonna say i'm gonna take a bath in that <laughs> yeah yeah um, i love that one because it's really give and there's another one called valor that on a brain scale you can actually see where courage steps in and changes yeah. the whole brain scan um, mm -hmm. to really amp up the courage part of your brain where you have this like badass energy to to make some choices and to stand up and and I, I know what you're talking about too I, I've made choices and I've said yes because I really wasn't thinking or I was just like get that person off your back yeah. right yeah it seems like oh sure you know and then I've like felt it like oh shit I shouldn't have said that or done that or agreed or consented and I've had to go back and go, hey, I know I said that yesterday. And also I felt yucky ever since. And I just, I, I'm going to have to recommit and maybe make a new ne negotiation with you. And I'm so sorry. And, you know, and like, you know, that way you have good karma, you know, don't just be like, oh, well, I feel bad about it. So I'm just going to ghost them and like, not talk to them and just not do the thing I said I would do. But, you right. know, agreements are energetic things and so it's really important to keep agreements but if you have to recommit just mm -hmm. come back apologize you know ask for a renegotiation and come up with a new thing or find mm -hmm. someone to take your place or whatever so you still stay clear on someone not fucking you over you know for excuse me i probably shouldn't say that but um that's all right i dropped oh no i divine mother earth time f-bombs they're welcome we are actually at fuck you therapists <laughs> that's true we do have we should do a like a we should do a kind of a 
We could keep we sh- we can do a fuck you therapy quite a bit actually. <laughs> fuck you therapy. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I appreciate you guys having me and I just love both of you so much and I love your work and, um, you know, your work is immense, Charnel. It's just amazing. We love you, Charnel. Hey, Charnel, are you going to be doing another, uh, parasite cleanse? Cause I got the pills and I was like, wasn't ready. Cause I was having too much fun eating at that point. Like uh, it was well, before when, Thanksgiving. We haven't, I mean, you could do it. In, when is the next full moon? Is it already here? Did we pass it? I think we passed was the, the lunar eclipse. Will that be the 8th? Like the 25th. Wasn't there a full moon on the 25th or something? Yeah. And we're moving into, yep. So it, start on the next full moon. That's when to start. So I can add you to the group if you choose to, to join or whatever. And yeah, okay. just follow all the stuff in there. And it, there's steps and guides and there's a lot of programming so you can do all the things with you know with the education to understand why you're doing it and it helps it helps to, for me anyway it helps to know why I'm doing it to to mm-hmm. keep doing it and the benefits right. um but yeah definitely. okay is it the swift fire group is that it it's in fix your shit is what it's called um, I think I'm in that group too but yeah oh, that's a good name yeah I, I love that well, I'm gonna just double check yes but, because yeah. parasites um will also change the field so Mm -hmm. if you have parasites that puts out their they have their own energy that goes in the field and that's another thing if you have parasites you can actually that's a door for parasite activity uh energetically so when we like archon activity oh yeah all right well i'm not gonna i'm glad i'm gonna do it after easter so i'm gonna like have the chocolate i want and then i'll see the parasite yes yeah but right parasitic people too that yeah like you're saying that we attract and who are yeah. susceptible to archonic influence i mean it's unbelievable how much humans are being weaponized and don't realize how much they're conduits of this darkness mm-hmm. because of these parasites and attachments and how the 5g and these frequency distortions feed mm-hmm. into them breeding and like multiplying in the body it's just mm-hmm. all right we have so much more to talk about so i cannot wait for our next conversation with you charnel it's always yes I, I i have a feeling we're we're going to be doing this a lot the awesome three of us. i'm here I for you yeah. i love it I love right. the awesome. yes hey well happy day everyone thanks for joining us on divine mother earth time with just us, such a divine mother here with us today <laughs> thanks so much everybody Thanks, everybody, and happy holiday. Happy Easter. Bye. Bye.